What's up everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you LaunchBox on the RG505 by Ambernick. LaunchBox is probably the best front end that you can use on the Android platform aside from Hyperspin if you're able to find a build that works. While there are other options available, LaunchBox is the best one that I've found. And the specs on this system allow you to run it fairly smoothly along with any customizations that you might do for themes, games, and artwork that goes along with all of that. If you haven't seen the previous video that I did on the Ambernick RG505, I will leave a link right here and you can go check it out as well as in the description. I understand that a lot of people like having a Linux front end to launch emulators on. However, there are some advantages to running this Android setup and using LaunchBox. As you saw in the beginning of the video, it's very easy to get a hold of. You just go to the LaunchBox website, download it, and you're good to go. Once you get it installed, I would highly recommend paying for the license so that you can get all of the features and actually load all of the games that you have onto the LaunchBox platform. Here are some of the systems that I have set up on this build. Everything from Android, Atari, all the way up to Dreamcast. And Dreamcast runs like a dream on this, by the way. One of the really nice things about LaunchBox is that there are many themes to choose from for your platform menus. And then on top of that, you have the option of customizing any artwork that's associated with each game and platform. With that also comes the benefit of being able to add your Android games to the LaunchBox library. Now, this is another thing that is absolutely fantastic about the RG505, being able to run your Android games because there are a lot of good Android games in the Google Play library as well as having access to the Google Play library itself, which gives you a wide variety of options when it comes to emulators and gaming. Not only do you have access to RetroArch, but all of the Android platform versions of the emulators, such as PCSX2, and a plethora of other emulators that offer you a lot more than you would get if you were simply running RetroArch as a standalone emulation option. And the obvious other advantage is that if you own it on one Android platform, essentially you own this on all Android platforms because the licensing key is universal once you've purchased it. So going through here, you can see a lot of the configurations that I have as far as the graphical and theme layouts and the artwork that's associated with each platform and game. As you can see here, the menu is very simple and it's easy to import games or even full library imports of games that are going to function on a specific emulator. On top of that, you have plenty of options when it comes to managing your themes and how you want your overall theme to look. And when I say that, I mean that you can actually change the theme per page. It doesn't have to follow one blanket theme, although you can do that if you want to. And here in the menu, you can see that it's also easy to import single games or in bulk. For this build, I've gone through each game menu and adjusted the menu so that it looks the best and matches that console, at least how I think it should, theme-wise and color-wise. In the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you will see those three little dots. When you hit them, you will get another menu that allows you to do things like edit the metadata and change the view of the current theme. You can also add pictures, videos, and other things to the game menus as you wish. Now, if you long press the game, you will get a menu for the individual game, which lets you make other adjustments to the settings of that game or specific to that game, whether it be metadata or artwork or something that's emulator related. Well, you can use RetroArch as a blanket emulator. You can also associate each system with a specific Android emulator if you would like. For example, if you wanted to use the Android version of Duck Station, you could associate it with that instead of RetroArch. We're gonna take a look at some of the gameplay of these games running on these different emulators, just so that you guys can see how smooth it really looks. These Dreamcast games are going to be running on Redream. It's not a retro art core. You can actually get this for free in the Android store 
and upgrade it for a very small price to get even higher resolutions and Dreamcast games will easily run at full speed on this. On a side note, the OLED screen on this thing really makes colors pop and is a beautiful display to play any of these retro game systems on, especially when you're going back to the 32-bit era and playing systems with huge, bright, and colorful sprites like Neo Geo. As far as handheld emulation goes, I think that having LaunchBox is one of the best ways to put everything in one space and have one platform launching app to run all of your emulators off of. The Ambernic is a very powerful system and does give you a lot of flexibility with the Android platform. Now again, I know that Android platform isn't for everybody. A lot of people like the Linux builds and that's completely understandable due to the simplicity that they offer. However, if you're more on the techie side and you wanna be able to customize everything and play it exactly how you want to, an Android platform is honestly a better option. The options menu in LaunchBox is very simplistic and gives you what you need in order to make sure that you can run things smoothly or customize things at your will. The simplicity of having one menu to choose several options from makes things easier and a bit more streamlined. You don't have to finagle your way through 30 different menus to access different features such as themes and other key configuration options which make it easy for you to customize your entire build. In the themes menu, you're going to see every theme that's available for you to download as well as what you've downloaded and then you can apply each how you wish to the system at once as a blanket theme or you can do it individually per page. With a lot of storage space and a lot of time, you can really make an incredible launch box build on your Android handheld. I would definitely recommend this if you want to go the ultra customization route and have something that is clean and presents well. Ultimately giving you easy access to emulator options and how you want to play your games. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the launch box on Android down in the comments. And until next time, I'll see you guys then.